What's up? It's your boy Picante Nino coming at you with another spicy video. Today we're going to be learning how to PvP on Zerker. I know there's a lot of guides on how to PvP as Zerker, so I'm going to keep it simple. And I know what beginners look for when it comes to guides for PvP. They want to know the quick overview of skills, so that's what we're going to go over. We're also going to teach you how to hop, how to set up your hotbar. And then also I'm just going to show you quickly how to set up your skill add-ons, your crystals, your skill enhancements, and your rebomb skills. So let's jump into it. Okay, so but before we get into it, let me just say a couple of things before I actually dive into it. A lot of people think that Zerker are tanks. Yeah, we're not tanks. We're very, very squishy. A lot of classes have positive damage multipliers against us. So that means they will kill us as fast as any other squishy character. We are a little bit more tankier, but we are extremely squishy compared to like Guardian or any other tank class. We are quick burst damage outer boxers, so that means like we want to stay in the outside, dump our damage, and get out. Whenever you're doing 1v1s or any type of group fights, 90% of the time we are using movement. So that means movement wins us fights more than anything. It doesn't matter about your damage combos, it doesn't matter about your AP, your DP, it matters how much you move. So movement is key in PvP for Zerker. If you want to win more fights, stacking slows helps you win a lot of fights because we have very strong, extremely strong slow stacks. If you don't know what you're doing as a Zerker, whenever you're fighting someone or whenever you're doing group PvP, just devastate so you can get your bearings right because that move keeps you safe and it also throws down a slow around you. If you try to grab someone and you miss the grab, you always need to have a backup plan because a lot of Zerkers that I see that they fight, whenever they miss a grab, they usually get punished really hard because grabs are not protected. And whenever you whiff on a grab, it is very obvious since you play the biggest character in the game. And whiffing a grab is obviously death if you do not know how to disengage after a grab. So that out of the way, let's jump into the good stuff. Okay, we're going to jump into our skill add-ons, crystals, skill enhancements for bombs and crystals just to let you know that the zerker discord has a lot more in-depth guide i play more of a defensive slash offensive zerker more leaning into dp dr and health but the consensus is on the zerker discord is just to go full damage monkey mode so if you guys want to see the resources in the zerker discord to have a more ap glass cannon build then it's in the Zerker Discord. And I'll show a couple of screenshots of where you can find that information. So let's jump into the crystals. I'm gonna quickly go over this whole section with all the rebombs and crystals, just so, because there's so many ways to build this, but I'm gonna tell you guys the key points to take away from. So whenever you're looking at a crystal build, you will need to make sure that it gives you plus five attack speed, plus five crit, and plus five movement speed. Whenever you're buffed up and eating food and using your villa buffs. So as long as all those conditions are met, then it's a good crystal build for you to use. For example, my crystal build that I'm using, I am heavily investing into resistance and I'm heavily investing into health slash DR. Other builds will still give you the plus 5 attack, plus 5 movement speed, and plus 5 uh, crit. But they'll just stack a lot more damage instead of HP. So just make sure those requirements are met for a crystal build and have at it. Now we'll be focusing on skill add-ons. So for skill add-ons, it's very simple. All you just want to do is just pick the skills that you use a lot during PvP and pick the best add-ons to put for those skills. So in my case, I like using Storming Beast, Frenzy Destroyer, Devastation, Seismic Blast, Scattershot, and Ancient Wave. Those are the main skills I like to use. For skill add-ons, because whenever I do a combo, I use all of those skills in a combo. And that's why I would like to use all those. The only exception is Devastation. Devastation is really good because you could put minus 7% attack speed and movement speed for a target. 
so you have a 37% slow on a target for 10 seconds, which is ridiculous. I don't know why it's still in the game, but 37% attack speed and movement speed slow for 10 seconds is brutal. And that's why I have Devastation in there. As well as Storing Beast. Uh, Storing Beast is just very good all around because you could chunk evasion by 3% on top of the 15% you have already attached to the skill. You give them also minus 10 DP. Frenzy Destroyer is just all around just a damage stick, you know, plus 10 damage for humans and plus 3% down attack damage for 5 seconds, which means whenever you grab someone and you do a Frenzy Destroyer into a Storing Beast, that is a lot of damage that you're stacking on them. Along with just a Seismic Blast is also another damage stick and also another evasion reduction. So that means if anyone's running evasion against you, you're chunking their evasion by like 20 with just a Storing Beast and Seismic Blast with those two skill add-ons. Like it's just ridiculous how much evasion you chunk as an Awakening Zerker. Scatter Shot plus 4% helping you with the evasion. And then also extra damage to humans with Ancient Wave and all DP minus 20. Ancient Wave is ridiculously strong. I see that everyone should take uh, Ancient Wave as a skill add-on. So in general, skill add-ons, just take the skills that you use the most in combos or in PvP. And then just pick whatever sounds good to you, mix and match. I know mine aren't meta, but those are the ones that I like to use personally. And I'm pretty sure you guys could figure out some better ones. So let's move on to the next subject. On to skill enhancements. For me, I like to use Feral Stampede for the movement and the catch when it comes with the stun. Wailing Beast is a free heal that also gives you a super armor. And Frenzied Winds is a 20% movement speed that you could cancel frame zero, which is really good. It's like a pseudo beastly wind slash that you could cancel instantly. I say it's really good, so always take Frenzied Winds and Feral Stampede. Depending on what you like to do, you could change Wailing Beast for Axe of Destruction, but I haven't seen a single Zerker use Axe of Destruction at all. So maybe you could come out with some new tech with that. But well, those are the three uh, skill enhancements I use. Let's move on to the Rebombs. For Rebombs, it's kind of really simple to choose which Rebomb you want to use. There's actually two viable options for Rebombs. The first option is using Rebomb Core Titan Blow. And that gives you a frontal on your Titan Blow, which is the one I personally use all the time for group fights and 1v1s. A lot of people like to argue that core ground lifting is good because it gives you a super armor on ground lift. So you just choose whichever one you prefer in PvP. Me, I personally prefer Titan Blow, but a lot of people who do group fights and group PvP tend to prefer core ground lifting. And then swap back to core Titan Blow for 1v1s. So just pick whichever one you want. The other options aren't really that good, like Frontal on Blasting. Who's going to take advantage of that? Frontal on Flame Buster it isn't that good. Stun on the first hit of Devastation, like maybe? I don't know. I, like whenever I use it, it just never hits the stun. Like the first hit of Devastation is a stun. You know how many hits Devastation uses? It never lands. It never lands. It might be good. I don't know. I used it, it doesn't feel good. Uh, you know, Seismic Blast, having a knockdown on it. Whenever you use Seismic Blast, uh, they're already in a combo. So you don't need the knockdown on it. I don't see a lot of Zerkers or anyone use Devastation or Seismic Blast. But the other ones I could see being used. But the Core Devastation and Seismic Blast uh, is a strong no. So just stick with using Titan Blow and Core Ground Lifting. Alright, now moving on to Zerker's key moves. I made a little chart for you guys just so I could spoil everything just for you to quickly get everything in. And then I'm going to break down each section one by one and also go into each individual skill. So we have movement skills, we got buffs, we got common catches, common knockdowns for combos, we got debuffs slash slows, and we also got damaging skills. So I have them all posted up in front of you guys so you guys could take a screenshot so you could burn it into your brain and just have a quick, you know, Zerker guide on an each skill and what does what and what is it used for. So now let's jump into more specifics and we're going to be starting off with the movement skills. 
All right, now we're on to the movement skills. So we have a good amount of movement skills that are very unique to Zerker. I think the most important movement skill that we have in our kit is Lava Piercer. Lava Piercers are pre-awakening move. And it is it could be used in Awakening and Pre-Awakening. So whenever you use Lava Piercer, it always puts you in Pre-Awakening, which are your axes. So this has a 7 second cooldown and it gives us super armor. So whenever we use it, we just hit shift space. Um, and that's how you use it. You need to get very used to using click to move with Lava Piercer. If you do not know how to click to move with Lava Piercer, it is very integral as a Zerker to click to move using Lava Piercer. The next skill that we have is uh, General Disarray. I like to hotbar this skill. I think it's essential to hotbar General Disarray whenever you're using it. And General Disarray could be casted in Pre-Awakening through hotbar. And it just does a little leap into a ground lift. This is a very strong skill because if you don't know what to do, you could just go into a General Disarray after a Lava Piercer. General Disarray is a good way just to get that little bit of a gap close on something that you want to knock down or just get closer to. It's very quick, especially if you use it on the hotbar. Shooting mobility is a catch and a uh, gap closer slash disengage because shooting mobility throws you backwards. But a lot of Zerkers, we like to click to move it the opposite direction to make it into a gap closer. So it is a disengage and it's an engage as well as a catch. So the shooting mobility launches us backwards, also throwing a stun. So shooting mobility, it is a uh, stiffen, my bad. So whenever you throw that, it just does that and you click to move it the opposite direction. So that's what a lot of Zerkers like to do as a catch and also as a disengage or an engage, depending if you click to move it or not. Another skill that is insanely good for Zerker when it comes to movement and catching people is... Uh, Feral Stampede. Each hit of Feral Stampede is a stiffen. So for me, it is Shift X. Get very used to clicking to move on this skill because whenever you click it into a circle, each of those hits stack on each other. So that right there is a lot of stiffen that you just did right there. So learning to move with a uh, Feral Stampede is integral. You could use it in Awakening or Pre-Awakening, but it always turns you back into Awakening. So, th those are very key skills. General Disarray obviously puts you into Awakening. You just gotta keep track of those quick ways to get you in Awakening and out of Awakening. The next move is uh, Shake Off. Shake Off is one of our most powerful tools because it allows you to win a lot of uh, like fights solely off of the iframe that it gives you. A lot of people don't know that uh, Shake Off gives an iframe. Um, so... Yeah, invincible during, what's that called? Invincible, just right there, boom. Invincible, not during a cooldown. So a lot of people like to do this. A lot of Zerkers like to do this. We like to Lava Piercer into a Shake Off. That was all protected. And sometimes like a lot of people just like to like do a Shake Off into a grab because it's iframe. Because you could linger the iframe into a grab. So you technically could have a grab iframe, but only for the first frames of the the shake off so you always got to pay attention to this little symbol right here because you can still shake off without it it's just not iframe it gets ridiculously good and strictly unfair if you use shake off when it's a uh, when it's a uh, paired with the grab with the iframe it is really nutty with the things you could do if you just keep track of that shake off cooldown another key skill that is used for movement believe it or not is storming beast which is our f stomp a lot of people are just like, man, well, that's a weird movement skill, man. That's how the beginning of Zerker movement got, uh, what's that called, discovered was through Storing Beast. The Storing Beast allows you to cancel into a lot of, um, a lot of cancels into movements. So, Storing Beast is actually the godfather of all Zerker movement, believe it or not. And then let's go on to Flame Buster. Flame Buster is a very, very advanced movement skill that you have to hotbar in order for you to abuse it. So what a lot of people like to do is they like to use Shake Off, but there's a little bit of a lag time. There's a little bit of a lag time. You see how I need to like wait for my character to like end the recoil? 
whenever you use Shake Off. But if you're spamming um, your hot bar with Flame Buster, you could just uh, you could just keep on going. You could just keep on going without having to have the recoil of your character getting up. So you could just cancel it with uh, your Flame Buster. So that's how you move with Flame Buster, believe it or not. It's a very dumb, cheeky way to move as a Zerker, but that that's how we move. That's how we win fights. The more you, better your movement is, the more chance you have at winning fights in PvP. So let me show you that again. It's, uh, it's very good. It's very good whenever you use Flame Buster. It's a very advanced technique. So in between your shake-offs, make sure you're spamming your hot bar. Because that, that arm lift cancels your, the recoil of, of you getting up. Okay, on to the new skill that came with the Magnus. I think it's a very good skill. Time to Rock is extremely good. Because you could do mix-ups and you could click to move it. And Time to Rock is actually, you just hit Q. That's all you do. You just hit Q. It can be used in Awakening if you hotbar it, like what I did right here. It can be used in Awakening if you use it via hotbar, but it's kind of slow. So it gives you a frontal and it also just, you know, drops you back. But if you click to move it, you could click to move it in the opposite direction. But what a lot of people like to do is they like to do mix-ups with, uh, with Time to Rock. You see right there, you could cancel it into an iframe into a change of direction out of Lava Piercer, which a lot of people do not know how to deal with, especially when you do mix-ups like that. So a lot of people like to do this, do that, into the time to rock, changing positions. So whenever you're in pre-awakening and you use any major skill, you could just hit Q and it instantly cancels into time to rock. So very common, shake off into time to rock is like really good uh, defensive slash offensive repositioning for your skills. So let's go on to damaging skills. My bad, I forgot one skill, and it's pretty big. The one skill I was missing is a Giant Leap. And Giant Leap is by far one of our most uh, exploitive movement when it comes to uh, catching people. Because if you know the spacing of Giant Leap, whenever you use it, it is unreactable whenever you use it with a Shake Off. So it gives us super armor whenever we're charging it, and as well as it gives us iframe whenever we're in the air with it. So it says iframe while moving, super armor on attacks, which is cool. It, it's fine, right? Whenever I use this skill, I just die in the middle of the pinnacle of the movement. So don't don't take <laughs> don't take the iframe of this skill too too seriously. Just treat it like a super armor, because I still get grabbed mid flight in this skill. So if it says super armor, treat it like a I mean, if it says iframe, treat it like a super armor. So basically, it could either be used as an engage or a disengage. It really doesn't matter. But I'm going to show you guys a quick tip on, on which matters. Because you could do it front ways by hitting forward F, or you could do it backwards by hitting back F. So whenever you use WF, it lingers the super armor. So what a lot of Zerkers like to do, we like to do this. And this is all super armor until my character lifts up his hand and he's ready. So as soon as he like tucks his arm back behind his back, his elbow behind his back, that is all super armor. So super armor, super armor, super armor, super armor. Okay, no more super armor. That a lot of people like to trick a lot of people with that super armor linger. But it takes a while to charge up. So like whenever you do a forward one, it takes a bit to charge up. But a lot of Zerkers, we like to click to move this ability. And in order to get very fast giant leaps that are like frame one giant leaps is the backwards one the backwards one is actually like way more faster than the forward one so what a lot of zerkers like to do is that we like to do a backwards giant leap into a click to move redirection so get very used to click to moving giant leap because it is a kind of a slow skill to start up but if you use the backwards version you should be good you should be good because the forward version like it doesn't give you that much distance but the backwards version does and it's quicker. So there you go. Now we're on to damaging skills. Okay, now we're on to our damaging skills. I'm going to start off with the classic Frenzy Destroyer. Frenzy Destroyer has been the number one damaging skill ever since Zerker got released. And all Frenzy Destroyer is, it's just down, left click, right click. This also gives us a 16 AP buff if you have the absolute version. 
for 10 seconds, which is really nice. So a lot of Zerkers like to do the standard damage combo for a Zerker is just any grab into a uh, Frenzy Destroyer into a Stomp. So it's any grab into a Frenzy Destroyer Stomp. That's that's basically the start of many Zerker damage combos, is Frenzy Destroyer Stomp. So Frenzy Destroyer is just a big damage stick, kind of like, you know, BF Sword and League of Legends. Just, you know, Frenzy Destroyer is just a good amount of damage, it's very quick, it could be cancelled with a Stomp. And it gives you a lot of AP, and if you have the skill add-ons, it just gives you just a big stat stick of damage right here. Down attack damage, 10 damage a human, and 16 AP. So you usually want to start off your combos with Frenzy Destroyer because it gives you the 16 AP for the whole combo. So it's really good. Now on to Titan Blow. Titan Blow is by far one of the... I think this skill is very strong, and I don't know why they overtuned it. I think the reason why they tuned it that way is because uh, we're, we don't do really well in large siege scale battles. So they decided to give us a very long range poke that just basically one shots a squishy character if they're not in protection. So it's just basically you hold down shift right click and then it just hits really really far. You actually can outrange archers. Well I don't know about now since the new patch came out for them, but previously of the new patch the archer buffs. You would just pressure archers just by uh, hitting Titan Blow. Another way to like cancel Titan Blow is if you do two blastings to get your, your buff, your 16 AP buff, because also blasting, if you use blasting, it also gives you a 16 AP buff. So Frenzy Destroyer and Blasting give you the same AP buff. So what you do is just do two blastings into a... Uh, into a Titan Blow. So, a lot of skills cancel into Titan Blow immediately. But usually, the two blastings, the last hit of Titan Blow hits the farthest. So, when I'm right here, I think I can hit that guy. The, the range of Titan Blow is just disgusting. The way how you use it in a combo is uh, by just doing the standard damage combo so you just grab frame short stomp and then headbutt knockdown into blastings so after the major skill like seismic blast into a split shot you could instantly cancel it into the final hit of uh, titan blow which is the most damaging hit so that's titan blow right there it's just blasting into your, your damage sweep, which is Seismic Blast, into a split shot into Titan Blow. Uh, let's talk about Seismic Blast. Seismic Blast is um, one of the newer skills that came out, which is down Q, which you don't use it that often, except for whenever you want to just throw out a very cheeky frontal guard if you are kind of like in a bind. Um, it's just overall just straight up damage, especially when you put on the skill add-ons to it. It's only used in combos most likely, but it's also used to like keep up good burst pressure. So you just go in, you go in, just dump your your seismic, and then just dip out with uh, shooting mobility and giant leap. Another thing too, ancient wave is our hardest hitting skill in the whole kit, and it also gives a frontal when you're charging. So when you're charging like this, that's all frontal. But as soon as it comes out, it is not protected. So it is our hardest hitting skill, and it's one of the damage enders in the, the combo. So let me show you the full damage combo. So I'll do this. And to an Ancient Wave. It wasn't up, so I had to stall it with the Devastation. But that, that's basically the damage combo right there. So Blasting is another way to uh, get our 16 AP debuff. Our 16 AP buff, instead of using a lava pier, I mean not lava piercer, frenzy destroyer, you just use blasting. So, boom, 16 AP. Refresh on it, 16 AP. And that's it. Ancient wave, seismic blast, flow, split shot. Uh, split shot is just right click after any type of uh, hard hitting skill like seismic blast. Uh, what is it? I forgot another skill to put on there, which is Scattershot, too. Scattershot uh, Ship F is also another good key damaging skill as well. 
So yeah, the the damage skills on Zerker aren't that hard to know. It's just they're all awakening skills, basically, except for Frenzy Destroyer. But Frenzy Destroyer is the setup to the damage. Okay, so let's move on to our uh, debuffs. So our debuff suite is pretty simple, only containing four skills, technically three, because Devastation and Earth Dividing are technically the same skill. So let's start off with Storming Beast. Storming Beast is our F stomp. It gives a 15% slow on top of a bunch of debuffs. So let's look at that skill real quick so I can tell you exactly what it is. So Storming Beast is our, one of our key debuff skills where it just gives melee evasion minus 12%, which is ridiculous. That is a crazy debuff if you're fighting anyone that is running a evasion build. This is why people say that whenever they fight an Awakening Zerker, their evasion doesn't work solely because of this skill. And if you add on the skill add-ons, you can add an additional 3% evasion, making it into a 15 evasion percentage. Not It isn't total, it is percentage evasion minus, which is crazy good. But it also slows attack speed by 20% and movement speed by 20%. And it also stiffens too, which is just ridiculous. So it's really easy to cancel into. After any major skill on pre-awakening, you could cancel it. So just make sure you spam your, your Fs whenever you, you have the chance to. If really good Zerkers, we know how to, to weave them into our movement skills without like making ourselves very vulnerable. So just keep in mind that your F stomp is a very good combo. Uh, a very good combo debuff. And it also is a very good pressure without combo if you get the slow off. So against like ninjas, if you get the stomp off on them, oh, it's it just feels so good. So that's why we always start off our combos with Frenzy Story and Stomp. Because that Stomp Evasion debuff and the slows are just ridiculously crippling to any other class that gets hit with them. Uh, another key skill is, uh, what's that called? It is Devastation. Devastation is a very crazy skill because this whole area right here slows everything by 30%. But if you have the skill add-ons, it slows everything by 37%. So that means if you land a stomp slow and then you also devastate, you're slowing them by like 50, close to 60%. Another thing that makes devastation very, very broken is whenever you, you hot bar earth dividing to your hot bar. So you, Hurt Dividing is basically the last hit of, of uh, Devastation. So, hold on, I, I, I did the Rabam version of it. So each of the slows last 10 seconds, but you technically have two Devastations. So this is Devastation right here, and then that is also Earth Dividing. So you have Earth Dividing on cooldown, or you could just use Devastation without the last hit, and you could save the last hit for another stack. So what Zerkers like to do is that we like to hot bar the last hit of Devastation on our hot bar and never use it during the normal cast. So what we do is like we use the last hit of Devastation very, very quick, cancelable, uh, slow. And then we also use the very slow version of it whenever we just want to super armor and telling people, hey, don't mess with us because we're throwing out a slow. But if you want like a very cheeky, like quick slow, you know, the flow of Devastate is just ridiculous because it lasts for 10 seconds. And it also does proc the skill and the, the skill enhancement minus 7% attack speed and movement speed, movement speed. So it's just really good. Another way Zerkers like to bait uh, people into their slows is we like to do the 10% BSR and then just linger it and then go into Earth Dividing right after. So that, that was all super armor and everyone thinks that it's done so they engage on you. But it's not done. You just linger the super armor into Earth Dividing whenever you use your BSR version of this. So it's like, okay, they think it's done. And you're like, nope. And then you throw down the last one, and that's when they get hit with the slow. Usually whenever you hit the slow on Devastation, you want to pressure them really, really hard. Like, extremely hard. So just pressure them with this. They'll never throw out the second half if you're just casting it regularly. And then boom, you just have a quick casted slow. 
that lasts for 10 seconds. So basically, you have a slow that lasts for 10 seconds that's spread across two cooldowns, which is ridiculous. And if you want to linger it and bait people into your slow, you BSR it, and then you linger it, and then you throw out the second half later whenever they get close. If not, you just cancel out of it. Another secret, uh, another secret skill that we have that also gives minus 30% slow, but it throws out a stun, is our BSR 100, which is our Fearsome Tyrant. Let's see if I can find it. I'm very bad. Yeah, so Fearsome Tyrant, it throws out a stun on the hits, but it also gives a minus 30% movement speed debuff. So a lot of people don't know that you can cast Fearsome Tyrant without having your 100% up. And the way how you do it is just wah, and that first couple of hits is a stun. So it hits very far. It's like very deceptive on how far it hits, but it's just shift Q. I actually, it's just shift Q and it comes out very quickly and you could just cancel it frame one or frame zero. So you just see the little roar wave and then you just cancel it out of it with, shock, with a shake off. It's very good. 30% slow. If it doesn't slow, it probably stuns. If they're an uh, iframe class, they most likely dodged it. You know, try again with your other devastations and your stomps. But yeah, Zerker, whenever you're fighting, you're looking for the slow before you actually fully commit. And that's why we have very good slows and very good baits into slows. So like we could just do this. And then we're just gonna bait it, and then we're just gonna go into that, cancel it. And also the Fearsome Tyrant heals you for a little bit too. So it's really good as like a quick heal and it's also really good for like a quick pressure or a quick catch. Because it hits pretty far. The stun hits pretty far on Fearsome Tyrant. But it does have a ridiculously long cooldown. So keep that in mind. So we're going to move on to our buff skills. Okay, so we have a good amount of buff skills. And we have different ways that each buff skill could be used. So for example, I've been talking about Frenzy Destroyer, how it's just a good damage stick because it gives us 16 AP. And if you use skill add-ons with it, it makes it even better for starting a combo. As well as Stomp. It reduces their evasion by 12%. And if you're using the skill add-on, it reduces their evasion by 15%, which is really good for starting a combo against anyone who's running evasion or just needing to get those extra hits in to guarantee a one combo finisher. So I explained Frenzy Destroyer and Storming Beast. Now we're going to go on to Buster Training. Buster Training is our most important skill in my opinion because whenever you use Buster Training, you basically just get 20% attack speed. It says 20% attack speed for 20 seconds. So yeah, the way how you do Buster Training, just left click. And that's all you do. Left click, you get 20% attack speed. So simple. Left click, 20% attack speed. You could cancel the last hit with a shake off. So you're basically only doing one hit to get the buff. So it's really good because that 20% attack speed paired with your Vel, your Vel's heart, that 5% attack speed, allows you to cancel into more abilities than you should be able to. So it actually opens up different avenues for more combos and more damage. So it, it's just very good to keep this up at all times. So whenever you see Zerkers, they're usually just spamming Frenzy Shore into, into this right here. But the most important one is uh, Buster Training. Because some of our skills go off of attack speed, but some of our movement skills are attacks. So that means our movement skills will come out faster with a 20% attack speed. So make sure to always keep up that Buster Training whenever you're fighting. Whenever you're fighting a hard class like Ninja, Sork, or any type of iframe class, having that Buster Training up always is going to help you. The next thing is Blasting. Blasting is also another pseudo version of, uh, of Frenzy Destroyer. So it just gives you 16 AP whenever you land it, which is just down. It does a good amount of damage too in combos. That's really well. Another key thing too is Beastly Wind Slash. Beastly Wind Slash gives us 20% attack speed. So whenever you use the 20% attack speed right here, I mean not attack speed, it gives us 20% movement speed. Another key thing about Beastly Wind Slash is that you need the Flow Windstorm so you can actually cancel Beastly Wind Slash into half slashes. So whenever I do, whenever I do like a shake off 
or a stomp, I get the little half slashes. This is a full slash beasting wind slash. But if you're canceling it and you have the, the windstorm, the float windstorm, you actually do half slashes, which makes your beastly wind slash a lot easier to do. Alright, moving on to Frenzied Winds. Frenzied Winds is a very good skill to have on hot bar. Frenzied Winds is very good because it allows you to go into your pre-awakening form and it also gives you the buff of having a beastly wind slash that is very easily cancelable. So it's basically beastly wind slash that you can put on hot bar, which is really good. So whenever you do fr uh, Frenzied Winds, it gives you the 20% movement speed buff. And it's just a very clean way to instantly cast into a uh, into a beastly wind slash, and it also does a knockdown too. And what's really good about this is that it's a uh, knockdown, and it also hits 360 degrees around you. So it is a very quick beastly wind slash that gives you the 20% movement speed, and it's also a very clean knockdown that hits 360 degrees around you. So what a lot of Zerkers like to do is that we like to frame zero cancel it with Shake Off whenever it comes out. So like whenever we're, we're moving around and we're just like moving around and get that free CC with uh, Frenzied Winds and also getting the attack speed buff. So it's a really good skill to, to have on hot bar, especially while you're moving around so you can get that free clean movement speed buff while also pressuring with a knockdown. Another clean skill that gives us a lot of stats, which is kind of really crazy and it's very simple to do, is Headbutt. Headbutt gives us a lot of accuracy for just headbutting. It gives us 15% melee accuracy whenever we use a Headbutt. So that's why whenever our damage combo starts, we do French or Stomp Headbutt to get that 10% or 15% melee accuracy. Which means if you're running Evasion against the Zerker, Yes, your evasion don't mean jack because we are like having 50% evasion, you know, chunking when it comes to stomps, our ground lifts, and so on and so forth. Another buff that we have as well is a uh, ground lift. Ground lift is also a very, uh, is a very crazy buff that no one catches. I missed it the first time in my uh, PVE guide, but whenever you do a uh, ground lift. Ground Lift has a buff on it that gives a 20% attack speed on it. So you see it right there, 20% attack speed. So whenever I just do Blasting and I do Ground Lift, boom, there's 20% attack speed. So yeah, those are all the skills. Okay, so moving on to our common catches. Common catches are pretty simple since we only have four of them. And technically one of them is very rare to use because it has a very long cooldown. So Storm Beast is one of our most common catches, especially when it comes to old school Zerker, which is just our stomp. This is a very quick stomp that could be, you know, used between any skill and free awakening. So basically, stomps are always going out, they land the slows. I explained what uh, Soaring Beast does, don't need to spend too much time on that. Another thing too, which is a very rare stun, which is... Uh, absolute fearsome tyrant. When you have you hit shift Q, it stuns. So this is an actual stun. So it counts as a whole one CC. So be careful whenever you're trying to full combo into a catch from this. It's a very far catch and it's very reliable and it also gives you more ways to pressure your opponent while also being safe and healing because it also drops a 30% slow whenever it hits. Another good catch is a Feral Stampede because it hits three player models 360 degrees around you and it also does a stun for each hit. I mean a stiffen for each hit. So that means like if a ninja's coming in and they're iframing around you, you could actually bait them by click to moving a lot of stuns in a, in a good circle. So instead of it just having one stun of threatening, you could stack them whenever you use a circle. So threatening four stuns on each tick. And I think it hits 14 times if I'm not uh, remembering correctly. Let's see. Feral Stampede hits 18 times. So that means you can stack a total of 16 or 30 plus hits if you uh, 
30 plus hits of stiffen whenever you uh, use frenzied winds, which is really good. Which is really good. It's a very good way to catch someone, especially with Warrior. Since your character model, since Frenzy Wins hits, I mean, since Frenzy Wins, since Feral Stampede hits three character models all around you, you could slide behind frontals very easy with this skill and also stun it. I use it commonly against Warriors because it gets behind their frontal very easily. Another skill that we use too for engages that also throws out a stiffen is Shooting Mobility. Shooting mobility throws out a stiffen, which you can cancel into a uh, click to move into the opposite direction. So you could uh, lead up with the grab right after. So most Zerkers will do this, they're on top of them, and you just grab. So it, it has to be a move used consecutively with click to move. If not, you're not going to get the full value out of shooting mobility because what good is a stun if you're moving away from the target? It does, it does me no good when I do this and you stun them. So, yeah, those are the common catches with Zerker. We don't have a lot, but uh, once you get them and you master them, you could actually just win any fight instantly whenever you land any of these. Especially when it comes to, uh, what is it, Feral Stampede. Feral Stampede, I like to go into a uh, Titan Kick or into a Titan Step whenever I land a Feral Stampede, just because it looks cool. You know, just do this into a Kick. So it just depends on how you guys like to do it. A lot of people just like to simply go in for a grab whenever they land this. It's very reliable. So yeah, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so now we're moving on to uh, common knockdowns for combos. There's a lot of them, and I'm going to show you guys all of them that I know that are common. So let's, let's start off with the most simplest one that most Zerkers use. So for the damage combo, whenever you get them into a grab or anything, some sort of like a stun or stiffen, we like to do headbutt. Headbutt is a knockdown only if you charge it. It doesn't matter if you do the full charge, you just need to hit shift and right click. So shift right click is a knockdown version of headbutt. And it also does give you the 15% accuracy, melee accuracy. So that one's also a really good, you know, combo extender whenever you just uh, get a catch or anything like that. Another catch or another knockdown after a catch you could do is simply ground lift. So whenever you grab someone and you want to extend your combo, most workers would like to double up, do a headbutt into a ground lift because headbutt cancels into ground lift almost instantly. So that means you're basically guaranteeing yourself a double knockdown because Sometimes people just resist the headbutt knockdown, so that means doing a ground lift right after is a smart way to do. And it also gives you 20% attack speed. So doing that actually gives you a lot of damage because number one, if the, the headbutt lands, then they're getting knocked down and you instantly go into a into a ground lift, you're getting air attack damage. And air attack damage does a lot of a lot of like damage. So yeah, usually it's a ground lift or sometimes it's a general disarray. You know, ground lift and general disarray, you could use them interchangeably. So it's just like ground lift into a general disarray. Um, so those are the two ones that are very, very common. It's just ground lift and, just, and headbutt. The other ones that aren't seen that often is a basically split shot. Split shot is a knockdown. So you could cancel it like that with any type of skill like let's say you don't want to use ancient wave and you just cancel ancient wave with a split shot i see people bait people frame one or frame zero with the split shot so they're casting it and then they just cancel it you see that that was a frame zero split shot which i canceled it way way too early so it never even applied the knockdown but yes you can just cheekily just Cancel your your Titan blow with a split shot and get a knockdown like that and it hits pretty wide as you see I knocked down both of those mobs pretty far from me um, Another one that's my favorite is just Titan step Titan step is like a great knockdown It used to apply a lot of debuffs back then, but they uh, consolidated it into uh, the new skills like seismic and scattershot Which is fine, right? But still it looks very stylish Another common knockdown too is after you do a Titan step, you can hold down right click for a crouch shot. Crouch shot is also a knockdown too. So it's a very flashy way to like knock down someone. So like a lot of Zerkers way back then 
we like to do this to get that knockdown. Another secret knockdown that I like to use, which it doesn't tell you in the skills, because there's a lot of skills that Zerker doesn't have, like the canceling of a Fearsome Tyrant without the 100%. So like this is also a secret move, which is the, the cancelization of a Fearsome Tyrant without having the 100%. They don't tell you that in the skill, li uh, skill list. And then the other knockdown they don't tell you in the skill list is Raging Thunder. Raging Thunder has a knockdown to it, but only on the last hit. But Raging Thunder also applies whenever you do this. Whenever you hit left click with the directional, and then in the last hit, you hold down a right click. So whenever you do this, the middle hit also knocks down. And it, that's also a very stylish way to do, a, to do a knockdown with Zerker. This is like the old school way of doing knockdown with Zerker, is just doing this. And basically, that skill, like in order to do that knockdown, your, your Raging Thunder has to be off of cooldown. So like if I use Raging Thunder right now, I used it, now it's on cooldown, I can't do the, the combo. It doesn't allow me to do it. It's pretty it's pretty dumb. It doesn't tell you that in the skill thing. But so in two seconds it's gonna be up and now I can do it again. So what a lot of Zerkers do, especially OG OG Zerkers, they like to do a grab into a fringe sure into this, into the rest of the combo, which it looks very clean. It looks ridiculously clean. So yeah, that's the secret knockdowns that the game doesn't tell you. I went over the most common knockdowns and we just basically wrapped up all of the skills. So now we're just gonna go over hotbar. So going into hotbar, I like to hotbar all my grabs because you can't just cast them regularly except for your e-grab, which that's the only grab that's not on uh, hotbar. But I like to hotbar rooting simply for the consistency because whenever i try to use rooting i sometimes use the e-grab which everyone knows that sometimes you kind of want to do a reset combo with your e-grab and that's why you kind of just want to use rooting so that's why i have it hot bar just solely for me because i'm bad at using rooting via the normal cast another one is a uh, rock smash which is also your other grab another one too is a uh, wrath of beast this allows you to pop a heal and awakening if you have it in hot bar so you only could cast it during pre-awakening but if you have it on your hot bar you could pop wrath of beast straight from your uh awakening another thing too is a uh, flame buster i explained earlier in the video why flame buster is on hot bar it allows us to do the crazy movement cancel when it comes to uh using shake off like what i'm doing right here I find it very essential to keep up with fast classes or classes that are trying to engage uh, aggressively on you. Another skill that I like to use personally on my hotbar is uh, General Disarray because it's a very clean way just to get some distance and also transfer you into Awakening as well. Uh, Beast Roar is another heal that you could use in uh, Awakening if you have it on your hotbar. So I just do that, boom, now we're in pre-Awakening from a Awakening. Uh, Predatory Hunt, this one I use solely because I'm just used to it. Back then, Predatory Hunt was used a lot way back then. And basically, Predatory Hunt, you hop barring Predatory Hunt allows you to click to move it as well. So it's a very good, you don't have to hop bar it, but that's just one of my things that I like to hop bar. Another thing, too, Wailing Beast, it's another kill that allows you to use it in Awakening and goes into Pre Awakening, similar to. Uh, Beast Destroyer and Wrath of Beast. It's, it's very redundant. Uh, this is a must-have skill to hotbar, and that is Earth Dividing. Earth Dividing allows you to cast a uh, a devastation from pre-awakening instantly. So, and it also slows. So it's it's by far one of the most strongest hotbars you could possibly put on your hotbar because it could be used in awakening or pre-awakening, and you could just apply a uh, super armor and they slow via whichever stance you're in. And it's very quick too. And the cooldown is ridiculously um, short. Lava Piercer, you don't have to hop bar Lava Piercer, but during certain combos, you have to use Lava Piercer cause, uh, on hop bar because there's certain skills that have priority over Lava Piercer in certain situations. So that's why I use a uh, hop bar and Lava Piercer to force 
Lava Piercer to come out when it's not favored when it comes to different cancelizations. I don't know of anything good, like any good example of that. Um, it's usually after like a grab combo and sometimes you just need to instantly pop a... What's that called? A uh, Lava Piercer to disengage. But most of the time it will just go into a ground lift. So like, let's say I'm comboing someone and I'm trying to like get out with a Lava Piercer. You see how I did the first ground lift there? But I was trying to do Lava Piercer. So, yeah, sometimes, like, uh, ground lift takes priority over lava piercer. And that's why I kind of just want to hot bar it so I don't have instances like that. So I have zero lag time. Another good skill to have that I recommend highly to have on your hot bar is Frenzied Winds. Because it allows you to cast it in Awakening. But it's also very instant in Awakening because you can hit 360 degrees and then pressure a knockdown and also get your uh, movement speed buff up as well instantly another thing too you don't have to use time to rock on your hotbar but i suggest it because you could cast it into a uh, mix up from your awakening it, it isn't that fast but it's still workable and it's not bad so it's really good just to like mix it up after like a double giant leap or a uh, shooting mobility to like give them a mix up that's all uh, Time to Rock is used for. And then the rest is just like health potions and stuff. So yeah, um, that's the end of the, the guide. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I've spent a long time. This video came out a lot longer than I expected it to. So those of you guys who are at the end, like thank you guys for watching. I did spend a lot of time on this video, so I'd appreciate it if you guys liked it and subbed. I'm trying to hit the creator program. Um, so if you guys would help me out and share this video with others, it would actually make my day. And with that, you guys, thank you for watching this extremely long video. I did leave out a lot of stuff, and I just left in all the, the little parts that I know people who are getting into PvP will like to know. I'm sorry I couldn't make it shorter, but I feel like this is what needed to be said in the guide. And hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have any critiques or any future videos, uh please leave them. I will look into them. I usually do whatever my community tells me to. And one of my homies in the comments section was like, win PVP guide. And I was like, yes, PVP guide is coming very, very soon. So with that, you guys have a good rest of your day. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.